Hey everybody, I'm Argolfumph. This is a walkthrough for Frankenstein, Master of Death. I'm gonna be quiet for a minute or so while we watch the opening scenes of the game. My current journey and all the events to come are due to a letter from my old friend, Victor Frankenstein. Victor is a brilliant scientist obsessed with the idea of helping people overcome the fear of death by finding the secret of eternal life. His letter is filled with worries and concerns, as well as the hope that I will help him. While he does not actually explain what's going on in the letter, he promises that all will become clear for me as soon as I arrive, if I will only come. It's obvious the letter is of great import, and I leave for a place he has mentioned immediately. When I arrive, Victor has assured me that he and his young wife, Elizabeth, will be there to meet me. Interestingly enough, we don't learn who our main character is. He's just some guy who gets a letter from Victor Frankenstein and decides, Hey, I'm going on this adventure. Alright, so... In this video, I, I did the tutorial, just cause. Hey, hey, over here, over here! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I'm uploading two different versions of this video. Uh, the lovely version you're watching now has my commentary. You get to hear my voice. I'm also uploading a version of this video with no commentary whatsoever for people who who just want to see the game, don't want to hear any, any commentary or anything. So, you know, I, I decided to play through the tutorial. I, I also did a video walkthrough for this game, a, a full video walkthrough for the game. Six videos, I play the game from start to finish, live commentary. It just... It feels a little weird, you know, it's like, hey, I've got the me playing the game split up into six videos. And then there's this, which is me playing the game in one video, which is under an hour. Uh, I don't know which video people are going to watch. Uh, are, are they going to watch the whole video walkthrough? Or are they just going to watch this one? Or is everybody going to watch the video with, like, no commentary? Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I've been doing this YouTube stuff for over 15 years now, and I'm still not sure whether people prefer uh, the, the commentary videos, the no commentary videos, the long videos, or the short videos. In fact, I think it kind of differs from person to person. But definitely the people who are just, you know, say, watching a game because they're stuck and they don't know what to do next, I think those, those people tend to prefer the no commentary videos. So, at the very start of this game, you saw they're like, oh, choose your difficulty setting. Do you want the... There are two difficulty settings. Easy mode and normal mode? Or was it, like, easy mode and hard mode? And hard mode is weird, um... Because there's no difference between easy mode and hard mode. No difference at all, believe it or not. And we're gonna have a scene, so I'll be quiet. You know, having seen this scene a few times now, how did that tree catch on fire? How did the creature start the fire? That was not obvious to me. Like, how did how did the creature do it? Did the creature have like a a I don't know, a lighter in its pocket? Yeah. Anyway, getting back to uh, the easy mode, hard mode, the game makes a big deal out of it when you get to pick which gameplay mode it is. They say, oh man, the, the, the hard mode is so tough, you'll, you'll be going, ah, screaming in pain, whereas if you try easy mode, well, it's so easy, you've got, like, no options whatsoever. That's just a lie. Easy mode and hard mode are the exact same, and the only difference is that hint button and the skip button. They're slower on hard mode, and that does in fact make hard mode more difficult. But still, it, you know, I was expecting like totally different puzzles, maybe? Maybe some new puzzles, wouldn't that be cool if there were like some 
exclusive puzzles just for hard mode. But no, hard mode and easy mode, basically the same. So we're still at the start of the game, and the start of the game is relatively simple. We only have a few items in our inventory. Uh, l later on, our inventory will just be absolutely packed with items. There's the villain of the game, Baron Igor. The one who's doing terrible things. Terrible, terrible things. One way I feel like this game could be improved is... Um, just figuring out the locations. There is a map. I'm not going to use the map in this video, but the map is not super convenient because in order to get to the place you want to go, you have to kind of scroll through the map. And uh, that the, the screens are just not laid out in an ideal manner in the map. So there is something like 30 plus scenes. So right now we're on the third scene screen scene those two terms are interchangeable in this game but we're on the third one we're on the third one and we're gonna get an item which will unlock the pathway to the fourth one right here i do like the music So you'll notice I'm I'm solving some puzzles early. So like like there I I just grabbed the diving helmet and went into the area. What you're supposed to do is you you're supposed to click on it first and realize you need a diving helmet. But you don't have to. You can just grab the diving helmet and use it. I'm going to be doing that throughout this entire video. It's a very fast playthrough of the game. We're going to have a brief scene. Igor's walking! Scary! Scary. Alright, Horseshoe goes over here. I'm gonna play around a bit my with- My efforts to discover the secret of eternal life seriously undermined my finances. But when I was on the brink of bankruptcy, a miracle happened. Quite unexpectedly, I made the acquaintance of a man named Baron Igor von Zinden. The Baron is well-versed in science, and what is more, exceedingly wealthy. Since he was fascinated by my ideas, Baron von Zinden not only agreed to finance my investigations, but also proposed that he become my assistant. Hmm, well that's nice. That's that's very nice. So I kind of like this game, how it has those little story vignettes uh, just throughout the entire story. So I mean, here's an example. I know to use the hammer here without having looked at that screen before, just because i played this game before. So I know how to solve the puzzles in advance. There are certain times where I didn't remember what to do next. Like, this is an easy puzzle. Remembering the crowbar goes here. Well, to be honest, there's only, like, three screens, right? We've only seen three or four screens, and we're done with half of those screens. Like, the first screen we were on and the second screen we're on, we're done. We don't have to go to those screens again. We're only going to those screens because we're going through them to reach the boatyard area. So now we go inside the Frankenstein house. And this is something that kind of bugs me, because we just saw Elizabeth get kidnapped by the creature, and now she's fine and walking around in her house like like nothing wrong happened. I don't get it. Ugh. Anyway. We are going to... As I said, I'll, I'll just be solving all these puzzles. There are a couple of places when I didn't quite realize what to do, and so what I did was I used the hint button to tell me where to go next and what to do. I cut that out of this video, so you don't get to see me play around with the hint button and get confused. Nope, that is not something we'll see, and I think we're going to have another scene here. Thanks to the generous financing from Baron Igor, I was able to create a miraculous machine. Its mechanism can reanimate dead bodies and even support life in them by means of electromagnetic pulses passing through the flesh. I'm ready to begin in vivo experiments. I do like those uh, diary things. It is a question of why I'm able to access them all in a certain order. Like, you think if I'm just picking up random diary pages, they wouldn't all be in order, right? They, they'd sort of be in, like, a scattered random order. 
Did my friend Victor actually leave that here? What happened to my friend Victor? Oh, well, we're gonna learn what happened to our friend Victor. We will discover that he's been kidnapped. He's been kidnapped. It'll be about, like, halfway through the game, and then we'll find him. And I feel like that's something which, um... Well, maybe, maybe we'll get told. Like, there. There. Right there. That was me getting confused and lost, and I cut out the part where I used a hint button to find the fish. You notice I have trouble clicking on the beetle here, and that's sort of the fault of the UI. So that's, that's a problem with the game, is the UI. I'm trying to click on it, but the game thinks I'm trying to click on the hint button. And same with that butterfly there. You see the butterflies in the upper left-hand corner, and... It's just hard to click. There will be other places where it's hard to click. Another thing which happens a few times is, you notice whenever I need to go back a screen, I uh, move my mouse to the bottom of the screen and sort of go back. I could also use the back button in the lower right. That's what I should be using. But you notice sometimes there are items for me to look at. You know, sometimes there are items near the corners. And that, that's that's the puzzle. If you've got items at the very top of the screen or uh, towards the bottom of the screen, well, that kind of interferes with the, the stuff I'm trying to click on, right? Now, yes, the game does let you hide the interface, but I don't know. It was just a problem with the, the flawed game design. There, there are certain places where it... it it is a problem where the UI does block you from clicking on certain items. I'll point it out when we reach another place where that happens. Of course, it's nice, nice smooth sailing here. Now that we've gotten the hawk ornament, we are going to find Elizabeth, who is knocked out. You're supposed to click on her and realize she's knocked out. And here's a place where I messed up. Sorry about that. I needed to get all three of the ornaments, but I missed one of the ornaments. This might bring me to another problem with this game. Not not exactly a problem. The hint button... There are two problems with the hint button. Like, number one, I wish the hint button would take you to the screen that you need to go to. Because like I said, there's like 30, 40, maybe 50 screens in this game. But... Uh, if you click on the hint button, it will not take you to the correct screen. So what what I do in the hallway is, you know, I'd click on the hint button, it says, go to the next room. And then I have to click on the hint button, it says, go to the next room. Click on the hint button, go to the next room. If you are five or six rooms away from the thing you need to do, that's a huge pain, okay? Uh, I mean, okay, it's not the worst thing ever. But, you know, I still wish that the hint button would just warp you to the room that you need to go to. That would be great. Another thing with the hint button is uh, it doesn't always show the items that you can do. We're going to have a scene here in a moment, so I'm going to stop talking. And I'll pick up once that scene is over, because we're going to talk to our friend Elizabeth right here. Elizabeth, can you hear me? Wake up. answered our plea for help terrible things are happening here we are all in the greatest peril it's genius my spouse has created a monstrous evil <laughs> I guess it is not explained that Victor Frankenstein has been kidnapped. That's what's happened. He's been kidnapped. Uh, we see his wife get kidnapped, but we don't know that Frankenstein himself is being held hostage at the train station. Something that we should have learned earlier on in the game. I felt like that would have like brought in a lot of uh, dramatic... Uh, you know, made, made the game a bit more dramatic. We are like, oh no, we've got to save our friend Frankenstein. Also... You know, like I, I, I said, uh, Elizabeth escaped being kidnapped the first time. Why did she not escape this time? The experiments with dead rats produce greatly contradictory results. While all the reanimated rats have supernatural physical strength, much stronger than that of regular rats, the reanimated animals suffer greatly from terrible pain. And as a result, 
behaved extremely aggressively. Yet when I decided to halt the lives of these pathetic creatures and end their suffering, the Baron persuaded me not to do so. Instead, he told me he had a recipe for a remedy that would release the test subjects from their suffering without killing them. So I know, I'm just sort of picking holes at the story. We're never going to see Elizabeth again until the end of the game. We are going to save Victor, who we didn't know was kidnapped. It would have made maybe a bit more sense if Elizabeth was the one we saved, because we know she's been kidnapped. Then again, like I said, we've seen her get kidnapped before and then escape. <laughs> um, so, like, how did she escape the first time? I don't know. I'm guessing they just wanted to have a dramatic scene to start the game with, and then we just pretend that didn't happen. This is a great place to show off that problem I was talking about, the UI getting in the way. It's messing with my ability to solve that lights puzzle in the upper upper portion of the area. I'm going to have to turn, turn off the UI in order to solve the puzzle, because you see the pieces are being blocked by the, in, the uh, UI buttons. I think it's impossible to solve the puzzle without turning off the UI. So that's that's a problem with the UI. And it's sad because I, I do like having the inventory at the bottom of the screen. I'm so used to that in these sorts of games, having the entire inventory at the bottom of the screen at all times. So, you know, if I could just have the, in, the UI at the bottom of the screen, that would be great. That, that's really all I would need. Man, I have a feeling I was going to talk about something, but then I got distracted by all those cutscenes. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, the hint button. So I was talking about another problem with the hint button. If you've got a screen with multiple things to check out, like this room, I can check out the safe. I can check out the fireplace. I can check out the, uh, the table. And so, uh, you know, if I hit the hint button, it's not... Oh, this is the number we need to use to open the safe. 1797. If, if I use the hint button in the room where I've got multiple things I can do, the game ignores them. Because the way the hint button's programmed is that you just need to do the next thing on the list. And so if the next thing on your list is to do something in uh, the tiger area, then it's going to ignore all the things you can do in this room. It says, no, go to the tiger area, do something there. Even though there are items you can do, there are things you can do here. Because uh, that, specifically that oil can, which we got earlier. We could have done the oil can and opened up the safe much earlier. We, we could have done that before saving Elizabeth, because that's when we got the oil can. We got that, um, we got it before the hawk item, I think. So, as that, that is sort of a problem of the game. It ignores things that you can do in favor of following uh, whatever order of actions the game wants you to take. Now, it's not such a huge problem. There are not that many places where you have options, but that was one place where you have options. Save Elizabeth or do the oil can puzzle first. There's Igor. And this is another place where you have no options. We've solved all the rooms at the manor and uh, the fire extinguisher. Now, we could have drugged the tiger before uh, reaching this area, but there's really no point because you still need the fire extinguisher anyway. But you could have reached that area earlier. So there's not a whole... Oh. At first, Igor insisted on experimenting on the body of a dead person, but I managed to dissuade him from that madness. Still, he persuaded me to experiment on large animals. He said he had a drug to relieve their suffering. I'm afraid even lasting when we got the corpse of the tiger from. Indeed, I'm beginning to doubt the man is sane. Might have been cool to know it was a zombie tiger before we disabled the tiger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but here, there's not a whole lot of options we can do because we've pretty much solved every room inside the manor. And so all we can do is basically go here and use the pickaxe and none of my other items can be used anywhere else. Using the pickaxe unlocks this puzzle, which will give me the... It's called two things. You'll see the bottom of the screen. It's called a, a flight yoke. 
That's the item. It's just in the center of the screen. We're going to grab it in a moment. That's the item we get from this hidden objects challenge. When it's in our inventory, it's called a steering wheel. I don't know why. I don't know why. That's that's odd. That's odd. But we're going to put it here. That's the only place we can use it because we can't use our items anywhere else. That's going to take us across the lake to a new area. And let's see. I believe, yes, we're going to use the valve that we just got. We use the valve here. Again, it's the only place we can use an item, and it's the only item we it's the only place we can use an item that gives us a, a film reel, which we can't use yet because we don't have the projector area. And now we have it also gives us the iron heart, which we have to use here. So places like this, it's rather linear, right? But other places where it's not linear, where you have lots of different options, the hint button ignores those different options and just acts like you only have one option at all times. And hey, it's true there are places where you only have one option, but there are places where you have many options, and I feel like the game should reflect that. that Igor has already started carrying out experiments without my knowledge. What's more, he's been experimenting on human corpses. As a result, he's created a terrible, unhappy being doomed to everlasting torment. Yeah, sounds like that Igor guy uh, is not nice. Maybe you should not have paired up with him, Victor Frankenstein. And the dynamite has to be used here. And that unlocks this area. I did mention that I feel like the areas could have been improved. Um, one way to improve is just, where am I? Where is this place? Like, we went inside a mansion... And, uh, and we crossed the lake, and now we're here, which is also a mansion. And the game treats it like it's Victor's house. Like, if you click on some of these items and get descriptions, the, the game will say things like, Oh, my friend Victor always liked XYZ, or, or such. So, I, I'm just wondering whose house this is. Is, is this Victor's house? Because those are definitely Victor's film reels. So it feels like this would be part of his house. And then there's also, like, we went to the house clearly through the back side, not through a front gate. So that's that's a bit odd. Anyway, with this puzzle, you need to find three skulls. I am going to cut out uh, about a minute of me getting it wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Mistakes on my part. Mistakes. Mistakes and failures. Yeah, there we go. That that was the skip to uh, me actually solving the puzzle. Because I had the nose incorrect. That's a pretty cool scene. Yes. Gives us the eye key. And now we're going to go back to where the eye key gets used. Back over here. And that's going to give us a hidden objects challenge. So let's see, this this one's kind of a... Well, I mean, all the hidden objects challenges in this game are relatively easy, I think. But a lot of them have puzzles like that, where, you know, we need to put the gear into place, and we need to fix the flowers and such. Maybe that would have been a way to differentiate between normal mode and hard mode, is uh, easy mode doesn't have these puzzles on hidden object screens. Easy mode just gives us the hidden objects and we could just stop. <laughs> we could just go right through them all. I mean, this flowers puzzle is not that tough, but it takes a while. And uh, it, it's a lot easier just to go through the screen and just find all the items. All right, globe part goes over here. For another hidden objects challenge. Yeah, that's another maybe problem with the game is just the back-to-back -back hidden objects challenges. I think this is not the only place. I, I think we've also seen other places where we've just get back-to-back -back hidden objects. Ah, uh, hidden objects everywhere. And 
there and putting the head on the armor and now I can just find everything else it should be easy there's the hand that's the item see that was me trying to click on the screw but the game thought I was clicking on the hint button because the hint buttons too close to the item we actually need to click on Oh dear, and that's also sort of a problem there where you know the, the globe is a bit too close to the back away from the screen area. We put the hand key here. Uh, we completely skip that room, I believe. And I did make a mistake here. I did not grab the banana from the record player, which is something you're supposed to do. We are going to clean this off. Yeah, moving through the inventory isn't so bad. And and we've got the the gas machine, which basically opens up this game. <laughs> We're gonna use it in three different places. So that's it's like the big item of this area. It's like, okay, great, great. So at this point we do have a lot of options, right? Okay, we don't have that many options. You need to use the gas burner in all three places. But, you know, you could do them in any order you want. You don't have to do them in this order. Uh, I just went to the things that are closest, really. And yeah, you, you'll see, we're traveling a long way back. There, the game did not think I was moving backwards. It thought I was clicking on the dummy when I totally was not. I'm still amazed the tongs can't pick up that. I think I would be able to use the tongs to pick that up. So, and now we have to go all the way back. So that's, that's why uh, I really wish that the, uh, the map did a much better job of like warping us to different places. There, I, I skipped ahead because I forgot where the sun ornament gets used. It's, it's, a, it's a lot harder to remember where every item goes when I'm not looking at every single item. I tried to do this game this this video just going through the game as quickly as possible I guess this technically counts as a speed run because it's pretty fast it can be done faster if you skipped all those cutscenes which I did not you could uh, probably beat the game faster and in fact a puzzle like this which takes a while you'd probably just use the skip button skip button to skip that puzzle I think that would be the faster way to get through this puzzle this one's kind of tough because you need to click very precisely. It's a bit too precise. I guess it's because, you know, technically you could have had those pieces overlap each other. And that's where I got stuck and cut out me getting stuck and using the hint button. Fortunately, the hint button said the banana was just one room away, so I was not stuck for very long. I also kind of wish I had clicked on the monkey before it became your friend, because there's a cool animation of the monkey attacking you. Here's the rope ladder. Rope ladder and the monkey. I love that overly dramatic scene. It's just overly dramatic. It's silly. Alright, that gave me an axe, and we use the axe to leave this house. Whoever's... Whoever this house belongs to, we still don't know. We still have no idea. And then it just leads us to some outside area and a train station. Whose house is right next to a train station? I don't know. It's like the train station has the other... I don't know. Whatever. Let's just meet Mr. Frankenstein. He's on the other side of this door. Oh, I started to lose hope you'd ever find me. I didn't know you were kidnapped, otherwise I would have been searching for you much harder. <laughs> Sorry, Victor. Victor, who chained you up? And why? Baron Igor. When I told him I wouldn't work with him anymore, he flew into a towering rage. And my decision to take apart the machine we've been using for our experiments angered him even more. He threatened to kill Elizabeth in order to force me to stay my hand. That's just an idle threat. Igor needs Elizabeth alive to keep you on a short leash. But now she's in the hands of the monster he created. So you must go and look for Elizabeth immediately. As for me, I'll start searching for Igor. We need to stop him as soon as possible. Yep, so Victor is going to disappear for the rest of the game. 
Like I said, it's about halfway through the game we find him, and we're not going to see him again until the ending cutscene. Him or Elizabeth, him or his wife, they are both going to be gone for for the rest of the game. And that's kind of a shame. I wonder what happened to them. I assume, like, finding her was a cool adventure, right? Because she's currently being held hostage, right? By the creature! Seems like it would be something interesting, an interesting story. Like, if this... Is if this game was made, like, in modern times, I'd probably be a bonus chapter. Definitely a bonus chapter. Alright, so this puzzle is going to take me a while. In fact, it's going to take me in... I'm just going to skip this puzzle, actually. That's, that's how long this is going to take. Uh, eventually. So, yeah... Now it occurs to me, like, hmm. I should have put a warning in, in, in the video saying, hey, I'm going to take forever solving this puzzle and I'm still going to skip it anyway because I can't solve it. It's just these three final pieces. That one piece is just out of the way. Ugh. Oh, well. Oh, well. All right, so that gave me a button and a sickle. The sickle... This is another place where the game is extremely linear and we don't have choices as to what to do. You have to grab the sickle and use it there because the button's an item we can't use anywhere else. And we're going to have to solve this puzzle here that's going to give me the shovel. I'm going to use the shovel in conjunction with that bag which I just got from the closet. So... I mean, you could argue that's not so linear because you need to find the shovel and the bag so you could find them in either order. But still, it's, it's basically, we don't have a whole lot of options here. And now I just need to find all the items on the lists. I do like how easy the hidden object challenges are for the most part. They're pretty easy. So here we go, we've got the sack. And we've got the shovel. I did mention that, that the hint button will ignore items you have, and that does apply to rooms like that closet where you've got two items you can pick up. <laughs> if it only wants you to pick up one item now, it will totally ignore the other item you can pick up. So now we're taking the train over here. How did we know this was the right place to go? Where is this place? It appears to be Baron Von Igor's, like, distant castle. This is where Dr. Frankenstein built his machine. So that just, that just gives me questions. Like, did he build the machine in the Baron's castle? I guess that's possible. Yeah, that's wholly possible. Okay. Still. It means we're going to be going through our third house, and none of the houses are like designated as belonging to a particular person, are they? I, I think it's safe to say those it's safe to assume those two houses we were in earlier were uh were Dr. Frankenstein's houses. But this one I think it's safe to say it's Igor's. So let's see, I'm gonna grab two items from here. I've got the flower key and we've got that. And we go back, and we're going to use the silhouette key, because that's the only item we can actually use at this moment. I can use my gauntlet. That's a puzzle you wanted to avoid that spider. When I don't click on the spider ahead of time, it's not obvious that's a puzzle. It's not obvious that the uh, jar there is an item you can click on, but you can. And there's the creature, just looking at a painting. Very cool creature. So that gave me the fourth demon head, which goes over here. Did that just say basement door? Yeah, I mean, this doesn't look like a basement. This looks like a, a, a giant tower. And it's blocked by a fairly simple puzzle. Just move these things around. And it's a hidden objects challenge.
think I get stuck here because I can't find the, uh, the one. I'm trying to click on the thing, but the game thinks I'm clicking on the hint button. Oh, come on. There's a spider that the hint button pointed out. The claw cans go there. Where's the other vase part? I actually got confused and didn't see the vase part. It is kind of hard to see. Uh, we do have to find four of the vase parts in this area, right? There's the lion. Looks like I needed the elephant. The fir tree and a lighter and the skates. Skates are relatively easy to find. Use the hint. There's the final vase piece. Another complaint that I could have about this game's setup with the hint button, especially in the hidden objects challenges, it will just, like, indicate the item you're supposed to deal with. I'll point it out at our next hidden objects challenge. And uh, the crowbar. This is where I got a little stuck. We're, we're getting close to the end of the game now. We're within 20 minutes. So this final area is, in fact, like an area that we... Uh, it's, it's kind of a large area that we have to go through. So the handle just has to be used all the way back here. You just run all the way back here to get the handle and the bulb. And then you have to run all the way back to Igor's house. Well, I guess not to the house. I'm gonna use the fishing rod to get a fish and I'll use that on the cat nearby. I do like puzzles like that, where the cat is close to you, right where the fish is, and so it, it's a little easier as opposed to having to go back 12 screens to find uh, where the handle goes. Alright, so that gives us this dart. We're going to use that inside there. That gives us the dart with the antidote. We don't know it's an antidote yet. It's called an antidote, but we don't know that it's an antidote for mind control yet, which is a bit of an oversight in this game. Because by shooting uh, the creature with it, I thought we were just getting rid of the creature so we could go to the next room. But no, we're actually hitting the creature with the antidote so the creature is no longer mind-controlled by Baron Igor. And that is going to be explained in our, our next scene. Maybe in our next scene. But it still feels like something that should have been introduced sooner. That idea. Alrighty, so we got the dragon head. This is the only place to use it. Now we have the tape and the bulb. So with those two items, we get a scene. I've learned the awful truth today. All this time, Igor's been deceiving me by telling me that his new drug relieves his resurrected being's suffering. But in reality, the drug suppresses their will. What does Igor want with this? To create an army of obedient, submissive creatures ready to rush headlong into a fight and kill anybody when ordered? We must invent an antidote that can neutralize the will-suppressing drug. Yeah, and that was the antidote we just used on the creature. Like I said, would have been nice to know this antidote story before actually using the antidote, because you know, totally... It's not something you pick up on until you replay the game and realize, oh... That's why the creature is going to suddenly turn on Igor. The creature is no longer under Igor's control. The creature now has free will. And it's all thanks to me and that antidote. Luckily that thing was an antidote. I thought I was just knocking it out with a soporific. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, let me see. So, for example, if I was trying to find the star piece here, and I use the hint button, the hint button would send a bolt of lightning on the star base. So, it, would, it wouldn't highlight that star piece, it would highlight where the star piece is supposed to go. And that's, that's not helpful. So, that, that was a problem with the vase area, because, you know, it will just highlight, here's the vase, here's the vase, here's the vase. It's like, yes, I know where the vase pieces are supposed to go, help me find those vase pieces. Um, I forget which hidden objects challenge that was a big problem for me. It was the one in the car. That w it was a huge problem there because with that one, a as you'll notice, there was the puzzle to press like those four buttons in a specific order. But 
all it does is highlight the area where the star shows up after you've pressed the four buttons in the order. So it's not a helpful hint button in that particular place. I don't know. I hope the person who is in charge of the hint button in this game doesn't watch the video and get really depressed because I'm just insulting the hint button over and over again. It, it is well done. You know, if I made a game, I, I actually have made several video games, but, uh, you know, when I was thinking about making an, uh, an adventure game like this and trying to implement a hint button, I that's one of the ways I might program it. It's just like it has a list of items that you can do in the game and it just runs through the list as opposed to uh, checking to see if there's anything on the screen. I don't know. Just saying, I, I, I understand why the hint button was programmed that way, but it, it could have been stronger. This is nice. I did like this puzzle. It's just a basic jigsaw puzzle, but it's still fun. Well, well. What can you do to me, eh? Soon, very soon, I will be so powerful that all of you will come to me on bended knees. You will beg to pay more homage to me than to any monarch in the history of mankind. More than to any god from any religion in the world. Please, break machine. It's machine of pain. It hurts me whenever on. Break machine, please. Yeah, so now that the the creature is no longer under Igor's mind control, because we gave the creature the antidote, the creature is able to fight back. It's a little hard to tell, but I believe the creature just threw a spear at Igor, mortally wounding Igor. I mean, this is the first time we've met Igor. Interesting... It's an interesting way to introduce characters. I mean, yeah, we've seen Igor wander around, be bad, and attack. But, like, like, Igor hasn't talked to our character before. You'd think Igor would have said something else like, What, are you trying to stop me? No, I mean, he's like, Ha soon I will have control, because he will have the control to bring anybody back to life. And apparently that will allow him to rule the world. I, I, we're gonna get into this later on. I don't know if we're gonna have another scene or not, but Igor has apparently tried to adapt the machine to make himself immortal. So he's going to himself live forever. That's part of his goal. So I had to turn off the UI there in order to get that piece. Finding all the items. Yeah, I do like how they're all generally large items, not hidden behind other items. That is nice. I like that a lot. And I solved that puzzle. Fairly quickly gives me the scorpion key. Scorpion key goes there. And let's see. I put the mask there because I don't have the item for the right. The coat of arms. Yeah, and... Now we're like officially done with the uh, the manor. Like when we got the picture of the bat and scared the bat away, that was when we were done with the, the first manor. And we're going to spend the rest of the game here inside Igor's manor. So it is pretty much like the last 15 to 20 minutes of the game are in this spot. Now when you're playing this game on your own, you probably will spend a lot more time here. Uh, because if you don't know where the items are in advance, then that's, that's, then you're likely to overlook an item. Like, you'll be in this place where it expects you to use all three keys, but if you didn't pick up one of the keys, then you'll be stuck. This puzzle I solved backwards. I just find it way easier to solve this particular puzzle backwards. So I worked from the exit to the front. That's going to give me the maple leaf key and the crown. And then we're done with this room. 
I have seen um, video games like do a sparkly thing whenever you're finished with the room. This game could have tried that. I think it's okay that it doesn't. It probably wouldn't have matched the atmosphere to have happy sparkles. If you looked at the map, the map would... Uh... See, that's a problem with the map. The map shows the green check mark when you check mark when you're completely done with the area it shows a red exclamation mark if you're not completely done with the area now that that uh, you're not done with the area exclamation mark will appear even in a situation like okay well you're going to grab an item and use it here a half hour from now so it's like that 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 was sort of a problem for me <laughs> at least it's like okay it says i can do something in this in this particular screen but actually you can't you can only you can only do an item there you know an hour from now like for example the front gate the the doorway to this manor it still says you've got something you can do here it still says that it's been saying that for the entire time it's not going to say that until Pretty close to the end of the game where we use a magnet there. So if, if you're checking the the, uh, the map at any point going through this manor, you'll see there's an item. You, you could do something there and you'll think, oh, I need to go there and do something. But you can't. You can't. All right. That's a lizard and the crown. Two lizards go into place. I guess the other things are just food, huh? So the crowns go here. That's something that totally tripped me up uh, in my normal video walkthrough for the game. I, I forgot where the crowns go. And so I made extra sure here for this video to put the crowns in place immediately. They, they go there. Now we go down. And see, this is a place where, you know, you could do multiple things, but uh, I think I did things in the ideal order which is I have the gloves. Now you could have gone downstairs immediately instead of like going back into the, the manor, but I, I wanted to get those gloves. N no, mainly I just wanted to get those crowns in place because I feel like I looked really stupid in my normal video walkthrough for the game, not knowing where the crowns go. And it looks like I'm really stupid here too because I need to get all three items to use that and I forgot where the, <laughs> the item was. This is another place where it's hard to back away because the game thinks you're trying to zoom in on the puzzle in the bottom right of the kitchen. And I believe this is another part where the game is usually... This is the part where the game is linear, yeah. You can tell we're getting at the end of... We're getting towards the end of the game because all the puzzles... It becomes extremely linear. You can only do things in a very specific order unless of course you've forgotten some of the items you'll notice we have a lot of items where it's just you need to find three of them we needed to find the three things to open the door we need to find the uh, the three grapes in order to open the thing in this room as well we need to find the three something else's yeah we need to find the three pedestal parts in order to open up the final room of the game so lots of threes here and we needed to find those three crowns we needed to find those three keys we needed to find those three butterflies all right so that's a lot of times we needed to find a bunch of three things and that you know the game sort of held on those gears for a while like an extra second or so maybe it's because it's loading the next area of the game maybe it's because it's loading the hidden object challenge or maybe it's because they originally intended to have a gear puzzle there, but the gear puzzle did not make it into the final version of the game. I'm just guessing. I have absolutely no idea. I was not involved in the creation of this game. I also would prefer it if the hidden objects challenges showed all the items at the bottom of the screen at once, as opposed to only showing four items at once. Because with, with those four items at once, um, the problem is at the very start you have those puzzle those puzzles ones. Like three or two of them are blocked by 
the puzzle that you have to solve. It's not kind of... So you don't really have four items you can find all at once. You really only have one item you can find and then three puzzles. Three items that are blocked by puzzles. And, it, you know, it's not a problem. No, that's not a huge problem. And we've got a scene, so I'll just stop talking. Are you surprised I'm still alive? Scared to look at me? <laughs> You're just a miserable worm. I'm the god who has beaten death. The god who can both kill and resurrect any creature on earth. And all of you will pay for the pain I'm now suffering. I'll make every living being suffer the torments of the damned. Very dramatic fight between Igor and the creature. Yeah, it is standard. Oh, and that's a place where finding the grapes is a little tough. It is standard with hidden objects challenges. I'm having trouble backing away there. Uh, it's standard with hidden objects challenges just to have the list of all ten items, or however many items there are, just at the bottom of the screen the entire time. And I wish this game had followed that particular tradition, because if you only have four items on screen at a time, those, that list of four items tends to get clogged by puzzle items. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. All right. So with this, we... <laughs> That's another place where I had trouble backing away, because the game thought I was trying to uh, zoom in on the treasure chest, when I was not. So I'm going over here. Putting the mirror into place. That's going to open up this area. Now, I'm trying to click on this box on the left. The game won't let me do that until I have the magnet and the bow silhouette. Then I can click on the box on the left. And that could fool people into thinking that there's nothing there in the box, that you can't actually go there. And again, I'm having trouble backing away. Oh, dear. All right, so the bow goes into this place. That's going to give me a bolt. And then I'm going to back away to where I can use the magnet. This is the room where you can use the magnet, the front doors. So like I said, this is the room that said there's something you can do here for 20 minutes or so. But it's a long time to wait before you can do the final thing there. And here's me putting the uh, shape into place, even though it is a bit early. I didn't get the, the the melted stuff for it yet, so we, we take the spoon and we melt it. Oh yeah, and then that was like a half second of me realizing, hey, why is it not melting? Well, it's because I forgot to use the bellows as well. <laughs> so I believe that's something we could have done earlier. But no big deal, we're basically at the end of the game. We're gonna melt the silver into that crossbow indentation I just made. And here's, our, here's me realizing using the back button is way easier, and I should have used that throughout the entire video. That would have been easier than trying to, to find the spot at the bottom of the screen where you can go back. Even though, in most cases, the place at the bottom of the screen where you can go back is pretty easy to find. So we put the items on the crossbow bolts, and that will take us to the end of the game. We need to shoot it at the top of the machine. And for some reason, destroying the machine ends the big fight between Igor and the creature. I mean, they're having this dramatic fight around the time I destroy the machine. Ooh, Igor wins? He grabs a big rock. I'm gonna crush him with my giant rock. And then they both die because of lightning strike. So, I mean, he was defeated, but he was more like defeated by nature, not by me. We can only have one life. 
After all, we must try to save that life. We must never try to get it back once it's been lost. Science must work for the good of all mankind, obeying the laws of nature. He who breaks the laws of nature endangers and punishes himself. And the creature is not dead, it's still alive, so that's sequel bait. Maybe they'll make a sequel to this game someday. I doubt it. The game came out in 2014 and there was no sequel since. So, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed watching this video of me playing through the entire game.